Now, the Australian share market lost a week's worth of gains yesterday with mixed results from the reporting season. For more, we're joined now by Rod North from investor relations company Boss Communications. Rod, good morning. Good morning. So what's happening out there? Well, I mean, we've seen um, March uh, sort of start off with a bit of a bang. I mean, often March is a, a month to be a bit concerned uh, in the financial circles. I mean, there's often that uh, adage of beware the Ides of March. And certainly we had mm. some good gains last week of 1%, but those gains were pretty much lost yesterday when the market dropped 1.5%. And of course, Wall Street uh, again showing concerns, particularly in relation to uh, the Middle East and, and, and Libya, and uh, you know the concerns there. I mean, it's also um, linked, obviously, to what's going to happen to the oil price as it continues to rise. Uh, the interesting thing, of course, about that is that um, you know Libya really supplies uh, a fairly insignificant amount of oil to the rest of the world. It produces something like two. Uh, million barrels a day compared to the world production of 75 million barrels a day and I think in some respects it's gone a little bit out of context in terms of where it's actually driving the price and of course we're actually seeing that in Australia now when we pull into the service stations and fill up our cars and of course I noticed yesterday there were a lot of people and particularly uh, on Monday a lot of people um, you know filling up thinking the price by the end of the week was going to be a lot higher. It's certainly going to get very close to $1.50. Uh, we just mentioned weeks, but it's, it could be days. Mm -hmm. It was uh, coming in this morning. Uh, I noticed it was close to 146 at one inner city oh, service station. Absolutely. And I think there seems to be a bit of an opportunistic uh, you know, mm. uh, opportunity never. taken there too. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Towards the end of the week, you never fill up at the end of the week. You always fill up at the beginning. Now, it's interesting to be talking about um, tax returns because they're not quite at the at tax season yet, although I guess we're approaching. But you've got an interesting figure here on the number of Australians failing to lodge returns. Yes, that was a bit of a surprise yesterday when that came out. There's 4 million Australian taxpayers that have failed to lodge their tax returns. The other issue which is of great concern is that small business owe $4.9 billion. Uh, and in respect to taxpayers, there's 700,000 taxpayers in Australia that have, that have entered into tax payment arrangements with the tax office. Yes. But the thing that what concerned me more was the fact that the tax office said it thought that there'd be about 260,000 small businesses that are in arrangements with the tax office that may default on those arrangements. And I think the interesting thing so, here... Sorry to interrupt. Interest, uh, uh, arrangements to repay? To repay. Or, or arrangements with what we used to call withholding tax? No, to, to repay. Okay. So it's tax that's owed and the tax department has negotiated with the taxpayers and with the small businesses to be able to make that tax that they owe repaid over a period of time. Yeah. Now this sort of also uh, gets to the issue of the two-speed economy because we have seen some very significant results come out from mining and resource companies in Australia but I think what it's really showing is a lot of small businesses are still struggling and it sort of links back into you know outlook for interest rates, economy still you know in a situation where even the tax office is concerned as to whether those payments are going to be able to be met. Now, if I could drag you into one of the key topics on the program this morning, boardroom quotas. You're somebody closely connected to the corporate sector, of course. Uh, have you got a view on whether these things work or not? Well, look, I'm very supportive of the fact I think there should be more women on boards, particularly in the top uh, 200 ASX companies. But I sort of have the attitude that I think we're seeing that evolving over time. And I think you're seeing a lot more... Uh, people coming onto boards, particularly men, who see that women can make very significant contributions to those boards. And, and I do think that we'll see it get up to that 30% and ultimately to the 50% that it probably should be. Yeah, how long would you like? Well, I wouldn't like to think <laughs> it's going to take now. too long. Well, it's 11%, in fact, isn't it? Ooh. Well, I'd like to think it's, <laughs> it, it gets to 20 very soon. <laughs> uh, but yes, I think there should be more women on boards, particularly in those top ASX 200 companies. The point I'm trying to make here rather ancillary is that um, when you say it takes time, it already has taken a great period of time. We and can't I'm suggesting wait that much longer. No, well, no. maybe we can't. I no. mean, maybe, maybe uh, something as strong as Joe Hockey is suggesting. Mm. He's talking about punitive measures yeah. if people don't reach that quota. I mean, that, is that a bit rough? Just be well, careful what you say, Rob. Well, I think certainly <laughs> a quota is, is important because then we've got something to strive towards. At the moment, it's very open-ended. Yeah. It's just evolving, isn't it? If we have a quota or we have a figure, that's something that everyone can work towards. And it's going to make a lot of boards, particularly those ASX 200 companies, really look and, dis and discuss those issues at their board meetings. Just wait for the day when we're actually turning you guys down and saying, no, I don't want to be on your board. Well, that day is probably <laughs> going to come. Run it yourselves. Uh, I can't see it happening anytime soon. Rod, good to see you. Thank you. Thanks so much.